So we all know the 2024 Megatons have had a lot of controversy surrounding them, how hard it is to pull certain cards. However, one thing it did do great is reprint Trident Dragion. And that's a good thing for all my Tenpai players or anyone who's wanted to play Tenpai because Trident Dragion is now affordable and easy to access. So with that, I really wanted to do an updated Tenpai deck profile for the October 2024 format. And the reason I wanted to bring it to you now is because I talk about the deck pre-Rota, but Rota is coming out soon. So I'm going to give you guys some pointers post-Rota during the deck profile as well. So with that being said, I want to show you guys how to play Tenpai, what the build looks like, and how you can be competitive with the deck in today's format with today's video. So let's get right into the deck profile. So to get things started, of course, we are on three Tenpai Dragon Pydra. Pydra is the most important normal summon of the deck. That's why we're maxing out on this. We're playing three, of course. And this is pretty standard, honestly, if you've ever watched a Tenpai build, like three Pydra, three Trundra. Some people like to play Fodra at one, though. I like to play two. I think Fodra is so powerful in so many different instances. The fact that it on its own, if you normal summon it at the mid to late game, let's say you're not able to OTK, which shouldn't be happening anyways. But if you can't OTK, this is really good in the mid to late game. It's also really good to set up a lot of the times as well with something like Gunro because you can summon the Gunroku, use its effect, summon Fadra, summon back Gunroku, and then you have extra bodies on your side of the field, right? So I'm only playing the one Gunroku though. I'm not playing two. I know a lot of people play two. I'm only playing one. I think you only need the one. What I did actually end up playing is two Doradora. So I know people typically like to play two Gunroku, one Doradora, but I actually like the two Doradora and let me explain why. One, I think it's an extra normal summon because you lost access to your summoning. Having that extra normal summon is really good. So two Doradora, three Pydra. If you open one or the other, you can still combo, which is really nice. Doradora, normal summoning, this gets you into Gunroku, which you get the special summon effect of Gunroku as well, which is really nice there. So there's so many different things you can do with Doradora and Gunroku, I do not like opening. I know there are times where you just kind of like normal summon this and then you can like tribute it to summon something else off. The reason I don't like that effect is because it's just so susceptible to Ash Blossom. It's so susceptible to cards like Called by the Grave and I just don't like it, right? So that's why I would rather play cards like these, the names at least, where they're a little bit more impactful than a Gunroku, in my opinion. I know typically people play two, and it's not necessarily wrong to play two. This is just my personal preference for the Tempai lineup over here. So these are the Tempai cards, Doradora being the, of course, honorary Tempai monster. And then we're playing uh, three Kaimen, one summoning, and one terraforming. I think this is pretty standard. Three Kaimen, of course. One summoning hurts, but you still gotta play the one. The card's absolutely insane. And then the one terraforming for the summoning as well, right? So we are maxing out on all that. Then we are playing one Call by the Grave. I always like playing this card at the end of the day, especially with summoning back at one especially with summoning down to one now i think call by the grave is really nice because it does help protect you against the veilers and the ash and all those other cards as well so call by the grave and then one part of prosperity of course for consistency unfortunately this card went to one as well but uh i don't think it's a card that you need to be playing and you can otk through prosperity as well so that is it for the tenpai monsters over here and i think this is all you're going to need to play i wouldn't play more i mean Genroku is the only other one that I would say maybe you can play two of, but I really like two Fadra and I would advise against not playing two Fadra because Fadra I think is such a good card. So now you guys are going to see we're playing a lot of non-engine as Tenpai would. We're playing two of the Moltrani Perulia. I know when Furos comes out, that's going to be one of the best cards in the game. So you, of course you want to be playing that one. But for now, we're playing the two Perulia. I would be playing three. Unfortunately, I only have the two, but we are playing three Ash three imperm as well i like playing the hand traps i know board breakers are really popular but i do like playing the hand traps because against a lot of decks especially the rogue decks hand traps can become really good so three ash three imperm and i love playing the bestial so one magna two druis and one ball drake i really really love this and i'll be honest with you if i had the third perilia I'd probably cut the ball drake for the third Perilia. I'm just playing four Bastilles because I don't have the third one. So I really like these. These are so good in so many different scenarios. Against the meta today, it's just so, so relevant. Fiend Smith, Ubel, even against like the Snake Eye matchups, because a lot of the Snake Eye decks will play Fiend Smith cards, right? It, it just becomes really relevant. And they're extra bodies for you, which help you OTK and push for a lot more damage. There are different kind of disruption that people I don't think are preparing around. And oh, it's good against Branded. I want to say that it's good against Branded. It's good against so many different decks that are relevant today. And I really, really love this engine. I would not cut it. Again, the only thing I would change is maybe one ball drake for the third Perilia. But I really, really like this engine. You could also argue that like if you play the third Perilia, these three also become Furos in the future. But the thing is with Furos is even though you're drawing a bunch of cards, you need to draw good cards at the end of the day. So that's kind of why I still like these hand traps, right? We're also playing board breakers. So we're playing a mix of hand traps and board breakers, which I think only Tempai can really ever do. I'm playing two thrust because thrust is going to get you into all your board breakers. So one harpies over here, of course two lightning storm we're playing three raigeki which i think raigeki is just such an insane card 
one talent and one change of heart this is it for my board breakers over here so you guys can see we're playing a mix of hand traps and board breakers the reason i like playing both is because i don't think there's any actual hand trap in today's format that's impactful enough to just stop my opponent from playing right so for that reason i just want to be able to use a hand trap or two to slow my opponent down and then my board breakers here are going to finish off the rest and then any normal summon of like pydra or a combination of like summoning or kaimin plus pydra or kaimin plus chandra or whatever is going to be able to otk so that's why i like the mix of both now i know post rota things are going to be changing a little bit again specifically with the furrows but i still really like this lineup right now and uh i just think for now until you get that card or until that card comes out be playing the bestials i think it's so good and i love the mix of the bestials and the spells the bestials also provide you with a lot of extra deck funny stuff that you guys can play that typically people don't play in tempai because they just go synchro focused but now you can play stuff like dark with the Druus worm and then you're going to be able to dark take an opponent's monster that's in their graveyard but then because Druus worm goes to the graveyard Druus worm is also going to be acting as a board breaker as well for you so that's why i really like the bestials because they give you access to other stuff in the extra deck which again is not necessarily necessary but it does give you a little bit more of a toolbox so moving on to the extra deck here, of course, it's pretty standard. We're playing the two Biden Dragion, the one Transcendent Dragion, and then the one Trident Dragion. Of course, with the Mega 10 reprint, Trident Dragion is a lot more easier to get your hands of, which is really nice. But this is pretty standard. Trident Dragion, of course, helps you OTK. But there's going to be a lot of times where you can OTK without this card. It's just that little backup that you need sometimes that uh, just helps you push when you don't have, when, or when you're just missing a little bit, right? So Trident Dragion, of course. Auto has Meteor Burst. I'm a big fan of this card. One Q-Belt, one Black Rose. And a card that I like to play personally is Ruddy Rose. It's it's a card that doesn't come up too often but when it does it's absolutely insane it's another 10 that you guys can make as well right now you could argue for playing another level 7 i know a lot of people like the samurai warrior card but i'm not a huge fan of that at the end of the day i'd rather make a card like auto eyes meteor burst in that in that scenario where i'm making that card so ready rose is just really good another level 10 for you guys to make one seal of course going first you're always going to want to end on this striker dragon as well to help you go into sp a little knight to get the banish so that's really nice and then we're playing dark kita selene and axis co now this is what i'm talking about when i say the bestials give you access to this kind of stuff Hida, of course you're playing a bunch of fire monsters so he a little bit easier but dark going into selene is, is very easy and then selene going into access code is very easy as well so i really really like this lineup and again this is something that you don't go into very often a lot of the times actually just prosperity fodder but when it comes up it's really good so again it's just providing utility for you and a toolbox that you guys can get into whenever it does come up very rarely does it come up but when it does it's really really powerful now moving into the side deck over here i want to say just before i show you guys the side deck that this is a skeleton for you guys to build your own side deck what i mean by that is if you go to locals and locals is a bunch of combo players make sure you side for combo decks if it's a bunch of back row players make sure you side for back row players this is kind of a mix of a little bit of everything so when you go to a locals and you're expecting to see rogue and meta and just kind of everything this kind of solves all of those issues but again if your locals has specific things that you know you're going to see make sure to side for that so first things first is three jewel and lockbird as well as three nibiru these are the hand traps that i'm playing when uh, they're really good into certain matchups i'm not maining them because sometimes they're not great into some matchups i'm liking to them in the side to be honest with you especially when like bestials are not good you can easily side these in when you're forced to go first you can uh, side drool and locks in and take out like the mulch armies because at least at that point you can um, have the draw and lock for even when you go first, if you have it in hand, if you can set up a seal and have a draw and lock where that could be very powerful as well, right? So that's why I like playing these in the side deck. We're also playing two Fenrir. Fenrir is really good for when you are forced to go first. I really like this card. I sided in a lot because what ends up happening is it kind of increases the ceiling of the end board. Essentially, what you can do is you can summon Fenrir and then you can make it seals like typical, but now at least you have that Fenrir pressure as well, right? So I like playing the two Fenrir. One Drago. Drago is of course very, very good into today's format, into a lot of decks. You summon this and they just have to pass. Sometimes they have to go into the battle phase to kind of try to out this. And then if they do do that, you're essentially living a turn. And that's all you need to do with this deck. If you're able to live a single turn, then on the pass back, you're going to be able to OTK your opponent, right? So Drago helps with that. Three Heat Wave, of course, and three D Barrier for when you're forced to go first as well. So you guys can see we have a healthy mix of going first cards over here because when your opponent does make you go first, it is kind of troublesome. I'm going to be honest with you. But we have some going second cards here as well. Now, the thing I would argue potentially if you guys wanted to do this as well is playing two D Barrier and three Fenrir the reason you can argue for two d barriers because we're playing thrust in the main deck so if you're forced to go first you can keep thrust in and then take out like lightning storms for example and put these two in and then at that point at least what you can do with these cards is uh you can thrust for these and then you have fenrir access as well just an option for you guys but again this is just a skeleton just something you guys can use to build your own side deck you don't have to take it fair face value but i think this covers a little bit of everything in today's format which is why i think it's really powerful
So that is it for today's video. I hope you guys did enjoy. That is my take on Tempai for the October 2024 format. This deck I think is so powerful, still one of the top tier contenders in today's meta. And I think even though that summoning is at one and prosperity also went to one, this deck is still really consistent. Trident Dragion is now a lot more accessible for anyone who wants to play the deck. And on top of that, a lot of people still are not prepared for what the deck can do. If they don't side for this properly, this deck can do a lot of damage. So thank you guys all for watching. I appreciate every single one of you. If you guys enjoyed, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh! content just like this one. We also do combo videos, vlogs, product openings, all of that good stuff. You'll catch it right here on the channel. So make sure you subscribe to stay tuned into all of that. I appreciate every single one of you. Thank you all for watching. And with that, Spanko, signing out. Peace.